As we can see, the crossheads are significantly more complex than many of the parts I've made so far. So I think it's fair to say that making these will be an interesting process. The reality is, as with many engineering challenges, is I just need to break it down into a number of simple steps. With that in mind, my first decision is to make each of the crossheads in two separate parts. First, I'll tackle the main body, which is going to be an exercise primarily in the milling machine and with a bit of hacksawing and filing. And secondly, I'll turn a stub into which the piston rod will be screwed. And then I'll bring the two parts together with a bit of silver soldering and apply any finishing touches. My first challenge is that I don't actually have any half inch or 12.7 mil stock from which to make these. I do have a big old lump of 5 8 mild steel bar, 15.8 in my world, which I will need to bring down to size. So I cut a couple of lumps off and get to work in the mill. First I work on the short sides using this big chunky end mill. I'm looking for a length here of 41 mil. So after cleaning up one side of each block, I swap them around and bring them into the 41 mil. For the longer sides, I reposition the stock in the vise and use a big chunky slot drill to first clean up one side and then bring it into dimension on the other side. For these, which are top to bottom on the cross heads, I'm looking for 36.5 mil. And of course, more of the same to bring the stock down to that required thickness of 12.7 mil. Okay, these blocks are now to dimension, so that's 41 long, 36.5 top to bottom, and 12.7 mil thick. After marking out the outline of the cross head on one side of each block, I decide to cut the recess for the connecting rod and this needs to come in from one end of the block which I've marked accordingly. The quickest and easiest way for me to open up the recess is to remove as much material as I can with a drill. So first I find the center then I center drill and drill three six millimeter diameter holes to a depth of just under 27 millimeters. To finish off the recess and join these three holes up I use a slot drill. This brings me on to one of the disadvantages of using a round column mill. To use a slot drill, I remove my chuck and use an MT collet to secure the slot drill directly into the quill of the milling machine. Because of the limited travel on the quill, this means that I have to lower the head of the milling machine, which in turn means I lose my references. In other words, I don't know the position of the workpiece in relation to the position of the quill. It's not a major problem, it just means that I need to find the centre of the workpiece again using the edge finder. Once I've established the centre, I crack on with a quarter inch slot drill to bring the recess out to dimension. You will notice that the slot drill is going in beyond the depth of its flutes, which is really not good engineering practice, but I am doing this over multiple shallow cuts. Next I drill the holes for the crosshead pins. I need a 4mm hole on one side and a 12mm hole on the other. So I drill all the way through at 4mm and then use a series of drills to open up one side to the 12mm. Next job is to remove the material from the front and the rear of the crosshead which will start to give it its distinctive shape. Again I use a drill to remove a big chunk of the material and with a couple of holes drilled on each end I use the hacksaw to remove even more material. It's then back into the mill so I can use a slot drill to clean up. At this point I'm only looking for a clean bottom to this cut. The sides don't matter because I'll be doing some more work with those in a minute. To get the angle on those sides I just referred to, I use my adjustable vise. To set it up I've got one of the cross heads clamped in position and I'm using the wiggler to vertically align the line I've got scribed on the side of the crosshead. It's actually quite faint and not very visible in this video. Apologies for the views of the back of my head, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm checking the alignment of the line at the top using the wiggler, and then bringing the quill down, and then checking the alignment at the bottom of the line, and adjusting the angle of the vise with a little tap from my plastic mallet. Once I'm happy with the alignment, it's a simple job of using an end mill to remove the material down to the line, and I do work very much by eye here. The important thing to note is that I do this setup only the once, therefore ensuring that the same cut is applied to all four sides on both of the cross heads. I 
and before going any further I use my belt sander to clean up the sides of both the cross heads. To ensure that I position the stubs correctly in the front face of the cross heads, I machine a register hole in both. I do this first with a drill and then open it out to 1332 with a slot drill. I almost cock up here by going in with a 9.5mm drill, forgetting that the recess for the connecting rod is only 6.4mm wide, but I catch myself in time and hence the use of the 1332 slot drill which I take down to a depth of 3mm. I use this rather odd size because it's the closest slot drill I've got to 10mm. Next on the list is to drill and tap a hole for a securing pin for the drop arm. This is located center in terms of front to back and also 6.4 millimeters from the bottom. It's quite shallow at four millimeters deep so I end up going straight in with the plug tap. To machine the slots for the slide bars, I return to the method I use when machining the axle boxes. I've turned this mandrel here on which I can mount the cross head by using the cross head pin holes and the mandrel as we can see is held in a square collet block which is held in the machine vise. And off behind the collet block I've got a bar to help me relocate the collet block when I move it. As a cross head is only held by an M4 nut, I also fit an angle plate to give a bit more support. With everything clamped up tight, I use the wiggler to find the center, that's left to right, and lock the table in that position. To suit the slide bars, the slot needs to be 3 8 wide, or 9.52 mil in my language, and luckily I do have a 3 8 inch slot drill to hand. In terms of the cut, I'm working to what I've already made. So for the left hand slide bars, the gland body is 30.95 millimeters tall. So that is a dimension I'm looking for across the slots. Given that the cross head body is 36.5 millimeter tall, it means I need to remove round about five and a half mil. So 2.75 mil from the top and 2.75 mil from the bottom. As I'm not looking for a finished cut just yet, I go with 2.5 mil. And for the top I do this over multiple cuts, round about quarter of a mil each time. Once I've got that two and a half mil off, I zero the z-axis on the DRO and swap the collet block over 180 degrees and machine back down to zero on the z-axis. These faces will now be equidistant from the centre of the crosshead. A check with the micrometer shows that I'm currently at 31.55 millimetres. I'm looking for 29.95 so I've got 0.6mm to come off. That in turn relates to 0.3mm coming off the top and the same coming off the bottom. I didn't plan that particularly well. I'd rather my finishing cuts were a bit smaller. That aside, I take 0.3 off the top, swap the collet block around and take 0.3 off the bottom. That's pretty damn good, coming in at bang on 30.95. I could really do it with being very slightly undersized by 0.01 or 0.02 mil, but I'll clean it up with some memory now, and that should just give me enough leeway. With the work on the body pretty much completed, I move on to the stubs. These really are a simple turning exercise, so I'll spare you my not so dulcet tones. The only point worth calling out is I do need to turn the shoulder to locate into the hole I cut in the front of each of the cross heads. Bringing the two parts together for each of the cross heads is a simple soldering exercise. So I set up my hearth on my bench. As you can see, it's not very permanent and it's worth noting that very close to hand I do have a fire extinguisher. In terms of preparation, I've cleaned the joints thoroughly and applied a good coating of flux paste. It's not really visible in the video, but I've also bent a piece of silver solder around the base of each of the stubs so that when the right temperature is reached and it melts, it will flow nicely into the joint. For heat, I'm using a sievert torch, which we can see here, and propane gas. I'm moving the torch around in an attempt to evenly apply the heat to the workpiece. Once the solder starts to flow, I do add where required with this piece in my hand. On inspection, it does appear that I've had a good flow of solder around the joint, so I'm quite pleased with both of these. Of course, they both now need a good clean up with some memory.
As a finishing touch, which I haven't recorded, I did round off the corners of both the cross heads as we can see in these pictures. I'm sure the sharp eyed amongst you will have noticed that I have not yet drilled or threaded the stubs for the piston rods. I'll be doing that when I make the pistons later on. The real test for the cross heads will come once I've turned the pistons and the associated rods, in that if I've done it right, it won't all bind up when I assemble all the parts. But that's yet to come. Thanks for watching.